take it nice and slow, Sugarfoot. Gentlemen, what sort of uh, amusement do we have here? Our uh, man Sugarfoot here is going to try and take on Fast Dietrich over there in a foot race. Fast Dietrich, huh? Well, all right. Excuse me. All of this on Mr. Sugarfoot, please. Now, Mr. Sugarfoot, <coughs> you just do your best. You hear? See. Si. Gentlemen, to your places. Three, two, one. Nah, friend. Cheating would be arranging for Sugarfoot to lose the race. All I did was provide a little encouragement. Now, uh, where are those winnings? On the North American plains, opportunity calls men of courage to chase the sun west into a new frontier. They would shape a nation, lay hold of their destiny, and birth a new mythology. But with the passing of time, every myth has its reckoning. John Henry Holiday known to America as a drifting gambler, deadly gunman, an iconic sidekick to a legendary lawman. But behind every myth stands a man, and behind every legend lies the truth. There is much more to Doc Holliday than his legend as a likable sidekick to an iconic lawman. The truth is, John Henry Holliday is a notorious outlaw long before he meets Wyatt Earp, and his life of violence is the result of choice not chance. Born into a family of means, he's highly educated and has a successful life virtually laid out in front of him, a life he chooses to reject. By 1872, Expansion West is in full swing. Seven years after the end of the Civil War, the American frontier is being established, while the South continues to rebuild. In Atlanta, one of the city's hardest hit by the Union, a young John Henry Holliday, has made it through unscathed. A gifted intellect and dedicated student, Holliday graduates from the prestigious Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery at just 20 years old. He graduates at so early an age that it was difficult for him to set up practice because he wasn't old enough yet. A clear testimony to his achievement, his critical thinking skills, and he was good. Doc Holliday was the epitome of a Southern gentleman, which meant that he was mannerly and likely also hot-tempered and bigoted, all those things that go along with living in the South during the Civil War and Reconstruction. You want me to hold him down, Doc? That won't be necessary. I'll put something on your gums to dull the pain. The only time I'm not nervous is when I'm working on someone's teeth. That's how I know that dentistry is my life's calling. 
Jimmy, what is your favorite kind of pie? Hey. Oh, peach. Well, that's my favorite, too. And if you hold still for just another second, you'll be eating some peach pie before you know it. As Dr. Holliday reaps the benefit of his privileged life and superior intellect, the man legend will forever link him with struggles to find his own success in the growing West. At the time that Holliday was beginning his dental practice in Georgia, Wyatt Earp, we think of him as being in Dodge City as a lawman, but at that time, Wyatt Earp was actually in Arkansas as a horse thief. Stop! Stop! Hey! Hey! Get back here! Stop! The penalty for horse thievery was hanging. That is what motivates Wyatt Earp's move west. He makes his way through rustling towns, places like Abilene, Wichita, and winds up in Dodge City, Kansas. Son of a... Dodge City of the 1870s was one of the most notorious of frontier towns. It was a town with no law, where buffalo hunters, soldiers, vagrants made hay of the town every night. Hey, where are you going? Unless you and me have some more fun. You've had your fun. Get your dirty hands off of me. Oh, I ain't even started yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wyatt Earp has the perfect combination of toughness and justice to be a pimp. He protects his women and keeps the peace in his brothel, turning a decent profit and making a name for himself in the process. Wyatt called himself a businessman. He was always just looking for the next good opportunity to make a living in this frontier community. Wyatt Earp is considered by many an iconic lawman, but unlike how he's portrayed in the movies, the real Wyatt isn't always on the right side of the law. From his early days as a horse thief to his time as a pimp, Wyatt will do whatever it takes for a payday. Holiday soon becomes one of the most respected dentists in town. It'll be just another minute, friend. <coughs> Are you all right, Doc? I do beg your pardon. <coughs> Yeah, I better go. He loses his good reputation just as soon as he gains it. His promising future shaken by a lingering cough and a painful memory. Six years before opening his practice in Atlanta, young John loses his mother to tuberculosis, or what's commonly called consumption. They called it consumption because it sort of consumed you. It was very long, slow disease, and it would really eat you away from the inside out. And the classic way to die of consumption was really to suffocate. We know that Doc Holliday had a very close relationship with his mother, something he really needed, something that gave him stability. When she died, when he was 15, that would have been a devastating blow. Holiday's violent coughing fits keep his patients away. A visit to the family doctor confirms his worst fear. I'm afraid it appears to be consumption. Try to get, Try some, to get exercise some exercise if possible. possible. 
There's not a lot we can do about it now. Moving to a drier climate will help. John. Tuberculosis, also known as consumption. To be diagnosed with this in the late 19th century might as well have been a death sentence. Consumption kills his ambitions and releases something dark from inside John Holiday, turning a gentleman dentist into one of the real West's most violent criminals. <laughs>